Yeah. 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 It's plum muffins and chocolate and Mary made them. And they're plums from the garden. Yeah, tell me. I have to show you. This is where they lay their eggs. So, uh, Deb, Deb will come later in the day. Okay. Okay. They've got three in class at the moment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah, you're keeping well? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay. Richard? Yeah. Steven? Did you call my name? No. Okay. Okay. I want to uh, welcome you to uh, our open garden and to the launch of this this book. Now, some of you know that this isn't the first launch uh, because you were at the first launch. This is the second of three, and uh, the first launch was at CSIRO and the launch at CSIRO was because it's it's is seriously a science book I said that it's written for a lay for a totally lay audience but each chapter is um, can we squeeze up I don't know each chapter is written uh, you know based on the principles of the science for that particular topic okay the third release the third book release will probably be in Africa um, uh, we are all going there in July this year. Emily, our eldest daughter, is already there working in Mozambique. And the reason for the third launch is because all through the book, the sub-theme is how the world feeds itself and uh, how it's going to feed itself in the next couple of decades. And that's a sub-theme that kind of uh, chugs along through, the, through all the stories in the book. The book was launched by an eminent scientist. So for the second one, it had to be launched by an eminent gardener. And this is Joyce. And uh, Joyce and Michael run an organic um, veg market garden out at Gundaroo. And I'll tell you what I love about them. They're incredibly generous with ideas and with time. And I can tell you how many, can't tell you how many cups of tea and coffee we have had discussing and teasing apart ideas and talking and all the rest of it. You know, scientists normally have to write these very precise, terse uh, manuscripts, which are uh, about a very... Uh, you know, very, very tightly written around a, a, a very small... Uh, I'm generalising here, of course. <laughs> anyway, but I got to write... Um, uh, uh, link ideas up in a way that I'm never normally allowed to as a scientist in this book. And I wrote a book of stories, and I'll tell you why I wrote the stories. Because I read early on that uh, someone said that children learn by adding new facts, but adults learn by asking new questions. And I thought if I wrote stories, people would bring their experience into that story and then they might say, oh goodness, is that really the way it works or whatever. So that's what I'm aiming to do with this book. Now, for those of you who visited me when I was writing it, you would have been subjected to book readings. Um, and the reason for that is because I was always trying to find another way to describe one of the old chestnuts. And I would have sat someone down and said, look, does this make sense to you? Does this make sense to you? And I'm not going to do a book reading because I don't have to anymore. Um, but I am going to read you one paragraph. 
the the obligate gardener that's me the obligate gardener is not always easy to live with they do not want to go on holidays in summer when the crops are in full swing they get anxious when they miss sowing dates and are downcast by outbreaks of pests and disease and edgy at the prospects of late frosts or summer hailstorms yet my parents encouraged me all the way as I slowly took over their garden and my own family is incredibly tolerant with the one who won't come inside until the sun goes down. I'm especially thankful to my wife Mary for her faithful support and wise counsel through many of the stories recorded in this book. At the first launch I had to thank funders, you see, because that's what you must do as a scientist. But at the second launch I can thank the people who actually gave me the space to follow my passion. My parents are here, my wife is here, and thank you very much. And thanks to Alison for organising us today, and uh, Joyce. Now, because this book's been out already for a while, or not for, for a little while, it's had a review. And one of the reviewers compared the work to Amer an American writer and philosopher, Henry Thoreau. Thoreau went to um, Walden Pond, and I'm going to quote him because I asked the question last night, why did he go to Walden? And he said, I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach, and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. That was 150 years ago. We still need to do this. And Richard is a modern day thinker and writer in just that vein. We've debated things, all the issues that beset us all. How do we feed the world? How do we feed ourselves? It's well worth the read. Um, and uh, put your head around some of the things and questions that Richard asked in this book. Now, because launching things has to be done properly. And oh my God. And it's cold too. And I suppose I should shake it and I'll try and not aim it onto too many vegetables. Richard, congratulations. This is a terrific book. Well, I can tell you, I, in the very first book I wrote, <laughs> wrote in, I signed Ursh, I spelled Ursula wrong. And this one, do you want me to write? Oh, yeah, you can write for Chris. Just get one bit. Chris, 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 Chris. I don't know if it's like this or not. I should find, I don't really want to find out. <laughs> Where's Nick? Is she going? No, she's still there somewhere. I'm driving her home, so... Ah, she can't get away with that. No, she can't. I'm, I'm the... Uh... Okay. Oh, just really... Yes, I can't help myself when spring hits. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you get the salt over the last... Oh, no. 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 O